What's up, everybody? This is Trey Biddy with Hogsports.com, H-A-W-G Sports.com, coming to you from Hogsports Studio, where it is two degrees right now in Fayetteville. We've got like nine inches of snow outside, and it's still coming down. I'm sure it's uh, it's freezing where you are right now as well. But we've got a great show today because we've got a lot of great material to work with, with Razorback basketball, with the football team, baseball as well starting up. We're going to get into all that. Curtis Wilkinson is going to join us, and we're going to take your questions as well. All that and more on Hog Sports Live. All right, just like that, out of the coat. <laughs> it was just a prop, just a prop. So we've got some good stuff, as I mentioned for you um, today. Arkansas, the AP Top 25 poll just came out. Arkansas is ranked 24th. Now, there were a lot of things that, that played into that. You had, you know, Wisconsin, Purdue, uh, Loyola, Chicago, a lot of teams, you know, losing during the week. Uh, Oklahoma State's another one that actually beat Arkansas earlier, and they actually fell to 71. So Arkansas comes in at 24, and – Actually, Chicago didn't. Loyola, Chicago didn't didn't fall below them. Wisconsin didn't either. But Arkansas b- jumped up to 24th nationally, deservedly so. I mean, Arkansas, when you look at what they've done this past week, winning at Kentucky, beating Missouri, which felt like they beat them four different times <laughs> in that game, um, they deserve to be ranked. They deserve to be ranked right now. I mean, they've quietly just kind of won six in a row in the SEC. And if they're going to stay there, they're going to earn it this week because they got Florida coming up on Tuesday. Bud Walton Arena, 6 p.m. on ESPN2. That's going to be an intriguing matchup. And then Texas A&M uh, on Saturday in Bryan College Station. Now, when you when you go back and look at this, what Arkansas has done, I mean, there was a period there where we were like, man, this thing is slipping away. There was all kinds of rumors going on. The locker room's divided, all this kind of stuff. And then they've just, you know, kind of – quietly rattled off a bunch of wins. You look at this Missouri game, and they were without Tillman. Arkansas was out without Justin Smith, though, in the first meeting, you know. And so they, they split it. Usually they don't split. Arkansas went in there and, and then them went into Arkansas, which really to me was Arkansas's worst game of the season, their first game without Justin Smith. Uh, but, you know, they had that one. They had the Alabama performance and the LSU before that. And that was really the low point for Arkansas. This, it feels like, is kind of a high point. I mean, that's the first time Arkansas, according to Hogsass, has beaten a top 20 – or excuse me, a top 10 team on the road since 2006. Justin Smith had 19 points. Tell me he didn't make a difference. Six rebounds. You know, the way this one almost ended or should have ended, highly controversial. I mean, it throws you back to that Auburn game, right? And we'll get into kind of that Auburn game in a little bit here. I, Josh Pate – Josh Pate, for those of you who don't watch Late Kick on 24-7 Sports on YouTube, you're you're missing out. The guy does a fantastic job, and he took a lot of time out, about eight minutes, to talk about Arkansas and the mood tracker and stuff with Razorback football, and we'll get into that, but I digress. The basketball team, the way things ended in that one, you have Jalen Tate making a clean block, pinning up against the glass, the referee, with an inadvertent whistle, a wrong whistle, I should say. He meant to blow the whistle, but he, it was the wrong whistle. He called goaltending. They go back and review it. It's clear that Jalen Tate made the block and that Desi Seals is there to recover the rebound, to so to speak, recover the rebound. So they go to the review. They give the ball to Missouri. I guess there's not an immediate recovery. They give the ball to – so Arkansas not only in a key situation makes the play, the big block, and gets the rebound. Instead of all that, Missouri gets the ball with possession arrow at a critical moment in the game. I mean, that was shocking. I mean, for that for things to play out that way where you make a play and you get the rebound, two plays, and for the ball to go back over to Missouri at a critical point where the game is on the line – is just insane. But that's how it played out. Arkansas still overcame. They came back. They won in overtime. 86-81. Their second road win of the week, also won at Kentucky in Rupp Arena. And now they're a top 25 team. They're going to have to earn it against Florida. Florida. 
Yeah, a good game all the way around. I mean, for, for so many guys. And Connor Vanover, who went 0 of 11 last time in this game, really stepped up, especially his play in the second half. Five of seven from the floor, two of four from downtown, 12 points. Moody had a good game. You know, Moody, I think it's interesting to Razorback fans to listen because, you know, to, to commentators because they're always like, there's Moses Moody, future NBA lottery pick. And, you know, the thing that I think Razorback fans have to remember is Moody is a six six wing who can stroke it, who's just a freshman, and it's all upside. Because, like, right now if you're saying, like, like, Moody doesn't have that, like, killer mentality right now. And he, he has a lot of other good qualities, patience <laughs> being one of them. But, like, if he had a little bit of J.D. Note in him, then I think people would feel that it is definitely justified that he's a lottery pick. And he is in the sense of his upside, his potential. He has the potential to be that. But, like, he's not the guy right now that just wants the ball, no matter what's happening at the end of the game. That hasn't been what he's done so far. I think he'll eventually grow into something like that. Now, I don't know if it'll be at Arkansas. It'll probably be somewhere else. But I think he'll grow into that. But Moody is – the reason people talk like that is is his upside. But he doesn't have like that, that killer mentality. So right now Arkansas is second in the SEC tied with LSU, which they're technically behind LSU because LSU holds the head-to-head, eight and four overall on both teams. Alabama is 12-1. and one. Nobody's catching Alabama. Florida is 6-4, and four, right behind that group. Tennessee 7-5, Missouri 6-5. Ole Miss is 7-6. and six. Kentucky, I guess, is Kentucky quad one now? Does that count as a quad one win? They were 76 last time. So they got to be 75th for a road win. So that's where things stand right now with Arkansas basketball. Arkansas football got a big commitment from Rashad DeBinion, who isn't ranked right now in 24-7 sports. Rivals actually has him as a four-star. I'm told he'll probably be a high three-star on 24-7 sports until they can verify some numbers with him, speed numbers, which I think just looking at his video, he's going to be able to verify that. But he should be a composite four-star, I think. This is a guy that, you know, he had Auburn, Baylor, Florida. I know that Florida really, really wanted him. So to go all the way into Georgia, Ellenwood, Georgia, at Cedar Grove High School, and pull this kid, I think is pretty impressive. There's his profile. Nice offer list. A lot of offers. Florida State was another one that offered him. I can go through them real quick if y'all want me to. Cincinnati, Kansas State. Kentucky, Louisville, Maryland, Michigan, Michigan State, Nebraska, Ole Miss, Purdue. I mean, it's a nice offer list. Check out his highlights real quick. This is what I notice about this kid. Watch his head. This kid's head doesn't move. That is a fluid, fluid player. Now, he's 5'10", 185 right now. Watch this move. Watch this little sidestep. Doesn't lose any acceleration. Whoop! (laughs) Right there. That is a move right there. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. (laughs) Here you can see him lined up at Wildcat quarterback. Watch his arms here. He's just weaving through traffic. Does that look like a guy who's given, like, maximum effort right there? Look at his arms. Just glides. Really, really like that. Here's another nice run for him at Wildcat. He lines up at wide receiver, running back, Wildcat. Look at that head. I mean, that kid can get it. Really nice pickup for Jimmy Smith, Sam Pittman, and the Arkansas Razorbacks there. Now, if you look at the commit list right now, Arkansas has four commitments right now. It's the 24th ranked class in the country, seventh in the SEC. Eli Henderson out of Duncan, South Carolina, an offensive lineman. That was a guy that Sam Pittman was recruiting when he was at Georgia, 6'4", 290. J.J. Hollinsworth, 6'4", 250, defensive end. Could grow into a defensive tackle possibly. Out of Greenland, Arkansas. Dax Courtney, 6'6", 210, nice long body wide receiver. Tight end, excuse me. 6'6", 210, but a guy that can really catch the ball. Got a knee issue he's going to have to come off. And then Rashad uh, DeBinion, 5'10", 185. 
listed at 177 here, but he's about 185 now, talking to some people in Georgia. So that's it right now. I think you'll see, you know, what Arkansas has to have happen is they have got to start getting visitors on campus. There is a resolution, the last one I saw was to extend the dead period to May 31st, which, I mean, that's killing Arkansas right now. And, and, And you think about it, like, you look at some of the other schools in the SEC who, I mean, they've at least had junior days and stuff with some of these recruits. With Arkansas, they they had, I think, one, maybe maybe one and a half, maybe they had a smaller one there. A year ago, they had some junior days, and that was it before spring football started. And that was it. And so, you know, you've got Sam Pittman here. First of all, Arkansas usually – undersells and over delivers as a town Fayetteville the facilities all of that stuff recruits are usually surprised when they get to Arkansas they're like whoa and I guess Arkansas has done a good job of their their virtual visits getting a guy like Dubinion so they got to get guys on campus because first of all Sam Pittman face-to-face is is huge for you you know he does a great job recruiting um, you know these coaching moves that they made were all based on recruiting just shows you how important he feels it is so They've got to be able to get out and evaluate these guys. I thought it was just kind of crazy to hear Sam Pittman the other day talking about, you know, these kids moving in because they had 13 guys enroll early and being like, wow, you're a little bigger than we thought. And I'm sure there are some other guys who are like, you're not as big as we thought you were going to be. You know, so I don't see why at this point we don't start, like, at least, like, you can have this many prospects come on campus. you got to, I mean, let the coaches go out for the evaluation period too, don't you? Don't you have to do that (laughs) at some point? I want to get to Josh Pate. Okay, so Josh Pate does the Late Kick show on – it's on 24-7 Sports channel on YouTube. I'll link it for those of you watching on YouTube. But he just does a a great job. He's a national guy, so he talks about teams all over the country. But he – yesterday, last night, he hit on Arkansas. He does what's called a mood tracker, how do Arkansas fans feel. In one word, basically, how do you feel? My word was refurbished. (laughs) But I thought he did a great job. He's got a great pulse of the Arkansas program. And I want to play this video. It goes about eight minutes. So video for those of you watching, audio for those of you listening. Let's get to it. It is time. Arkansas Mood Tracker. I went a different direction on this one. I also hit up the Arkansas board today. Got a lot of good suggestions on mood. Cautious optimism abounded there. But there's also, here's what's fun about Arkansas. There's, There's this rogue nature about Arkansas right now and it's due in large part to the way they just got treated by the conference and it seems like the entire world this past year about to talk about that but my mood for Arkansas right now is uh, what I have termed Russian satellite energy now this has actually nothing to do with Russia but it does have a lot to do with the movie Armageddon remember when all hope seemed to be lost in the movie Armageddon spoiler alert it's only 20 years old for those of you who haven't seen it when all seemed to be lost and Gracie was never going to see Bruce Willis again and Ben Affleck, and they were just going to die, and then everyone was going to die. It was just going to be a whole bunch of death. It was a global killer, as Billy Bob Thornton said. And then all of a sudden, there's this some guy. He's he's working at NASA. He's like fifth string. He's probably making under a quarter million a year, so basically ramen noodling his way through life. And he says, hold up, finger in the ear. I I got some magic happening. I'm bouncing a signal off a Russian satellite. And all of a sudden, there's Bruce Willis, all of NASA, had lost communication with the shuttle. But then we just, oh, we just have to bounce a signal off a Russian satellite. And there's Bruce Willis, and he gets to tell his daughter goodbye. I'm about to have to blow up this asteroid and save the world. Well, how in the world does that tie into Arkansas football? Well, I want you to think about something this last year, because it all seemed lost for Arkansas. First off, already you had a new coaching staff coming in, and this is not the end of 2020, mind you. This is not revisionist history time. Very few people believed in Sam Pittman when he got there. And there were questions amongst some of the fan base when he got there. They love Sam Pittman as a personality. They love him. He, he fit the culture. They all knew that. We all knew that. You didn't even have to be an Arkansas fan to know that. But there was a question of, is this guy the right guy to help us compete in the most rabid and toughest conference in America, the toughest division in the toughest conference in America? And then, not only do you have that, of course, like any other new staff out there, you're dealt a crippling blow with the entire COVID situation, and no one really takes it easy on you. And then the SEC says, oh, by the way, 
Sam, is that your name? Sam Pittman? Yeah, cool. We're going to give you a new schedule, and we're going to have you play uh, Alabama and Georgia and Florida and the Chiefs and the Patriots and, and pretty much everyone else. Have fun. Oh, and by the way, don't think for a second that you're going to actually win any of these games. Well, in Arkansas, they got kind of bold, and they said, you know what? Like, we're, we're going to undo the top three buttons, and we're going to go beat Mississippi State. And then we're going we're gonna to go beat Auburn. And the SEC said, no, you're not. You're not going to beat Auburn. You may think you've got Auburn beaten, but we're overturning this call, and we're overturning the game in the process. Go home. Go home. And so all seemed lost. Okay? World's about to end. Aforementioned metaphor to Armageddon. And then you just start bouncing that signal off the Russian satellite. And we just we got some magic happening. And it, Arkansas was competitive the whole year. And they go 3-7, and seven, which, which doesn't sound impressive to an outsider. Well, that's fine. Be an outsider. But if you're on the ground in Fayetteville, you understand how low the expectation level was. There were people out there floating an over-under win total of one and a half for you. So you win three, but I don't just want to talk about the three that they won. You know, they also lost, I think it was, they lost three more games by a combined seven points. So, I mean, that was a really competitive team all year. They didn't challenge Alabama. They weren't supposed to challenge Alabama. But this is their, this is their schedule, and this is their record last year. Look late in the year. I mean, they lost by three to the defending national champ. They had a wild game at Missouri. We were victimized in the pocketbook by that one. 50-48. to 48. This was really competitive. They played Texas A&M 42-31. This was a competitive team all year. And you know what it's done? It's frustrated some SEC fans. And it reminds me a lot of Miss, not Mississippi State, Michigan State. Arkansas is starting to remind me a little bit of Michigan State under a guy named Mark D'Antonio. Hasn't been all that long ago. You guys remember. Michigan, Ohio State out recruiting Michigan State every year. Michigan State is uh, a team that's supposed to know their role, and they're supposed to be a nice, scrappy, competitive bunch, but they're ultimately supposed to take their two or three touchdown loss, go back to East Lansing. You can win your out-of-conference games, go challenge Iowa or Minnesota, but you're not supposed to challenge the big boys. And Mark D'Antonio turned that entire dynamic, especially the Michigan-Michigan State dynamic, but in some years, even the Michigan State versus Ohio State with Urban Meyer dynamic, it was like watching someone try and defeat a bowling ball with a flamethrower. That's what it looked like a lot of times in the Big Ten because you had this team full of two- and three-star no-names, and then you got a litany of guys who were about to go in the first and second round of the draft, and Michigan State just won. They just found these ugly, hideous ways to win, and people in the Big Ten got mad because... We don't care if you try hard. We don't care if you're a nice, solid story. You're not supposed to be winning these games. Like, we don't want you in the spotlight. It's just Michigan State. We need these big brand names in the spotlight. That's what Arkansas started to be on the precipice of doing last year. Not against Alabama. In the end, not against Georgia. But they started to knock on some doors that they're really not expected to knock on, not supposed to knock on. Now, here's the key moving forward. Will Sam Pittman maintain that identity and be able to maintain that theme? Because... There was no big secret about Arkansas in 2020. This is kind of what gives me a little bit of optimism. There was no threading of the needle. There was nothing overly fancy. I don't think that very many opposing staffs stayed up late, you know, the, the night before they're playing Arkansas, pulling their hair out, trying to, uh, trying to figure out what they're doing schematically. It was none of that. It was just they kind of had a, a sum greater than the individual part sort of bowling ball mentality. And, and now – Offensively, the style was far from that, but I'm talking about collectively, philosophically. That's kind of what it was. That's what it has to be in the future for Arkansas. But here's what has a lot of their fans excited. This is exactly how they want to go about it. They refuse to know their role, and they exist in their own ecosystem. See, for a while, you know, when they brought Brett Bielema in, it was ludicrous because they brought him in, and they basically tried to bring in someone who could try and out Alabama, Alabama. Well, that's stupid at Arkansas. You're not going to do that. So you got all the incentive in the world to do it a different way. Exist in your own ecosystem there. Don't be part of the SEC East or West or SEC as a whole. Don't try and do a version of what they do. Just do Arkansas. Just be you and refuse to know your role. Number one, if you do it, the fan base will love you for it. They went three and seven this past year. Entire fan base is jacked about the future of the program. You got some programs that put up a better record, and they'll struggle to sell tickets this upcoming year, even if stadiums are open to full capacity. So love where Arkansas is, because even if you're not buying them to make a certain caliber bowl game, that's not an easy out. I can tell you right now, there are a lot of programs – of greater acclaim, let's just say, in the SEC that the big-time programs would rather face. They had to play this Saturday than Arkansas. Records don't reflect it, 
But the attitude collectively of the team reflects it. Now, lastly, before we move on and close the show, actually, I want you to pay attention to this. Sam Pittman, pretty quietly, has made some staff moves up there. It's because of recruiting. They just locked up uh, a class that was way better than I thought they'd lock up, to be brutally honest with you. It was, it was, I thought they'd be floating in the 30 range, teens, 20s range. So good for Sam Pittman. The guy's going to recruit. I, I don't have any doubt about that. Uh, they've made some moves on the staff to up their recruiting game more. They know what they have to do. Like, they know, you know, you're not going to bubble gum and paperclip your way through the SEC West, but they know if we get a certain caliber athlete here, we don't have to beat Alabama for a lot of kids. Let's just get in the ballpark, and then we're going to put us, we're going to put Arkansas in them, and it's going to be good enough. I don't know how. Don't ask me. We may get outgained by 100 yards here and win by three. We may turn it over twice and still win by seven over here. We're going to find ways to win games because, you know, from Sam Pittman's perspective, we're Arkansas. That's what we do. Is that guy a pro or what? If you're looking for a national show to watch The Late Kick with Josh Pate on the 24-7 Sports channel on YouTube, great, great show. And is that a guy that, like, just got a, a list of key talking points or somebody who knows what he's talking about when it comes to Arkansas, knows what the fan base is feeling right now? And he does that with all the schools. So if you want a great national podcast or show to follow, there you go. Nobody does a better job than Josh Pate. Fantastic work. I had a chance to meet Josh uh, a year ago, about exactly a year ago in Nashville, right before all this pandemic stuff started, and um, had a really good conversation. Actually had lunch with him. Does a great job. Really understands college football. I thought he made some interesting points because, you know, when Sam Pittman got hired at first, you're like, love Sam Pittman. Is this the guy? Is this the guy that's going to turn things around for Arkansas, though? Love him. He's Arkansas in so many ways, but is he the guy? I thought that was a great point. Um, you know, just what we were talking about also with the COVID situation hitting for Arkansas with having a new staff, you know, not having recruits here, no camps, none of that kind of stuff for a new staff like that. I think COVID impacted them more, you know, first of all, from, you know, installing a new offense and defense, that aspect of it. But for recruiting, the recruiting aspect of it, so much to overcome by not being able to have visitors there with a new staff for the first time when other staffs have had that, you know, staffs that have been there. Not only do they have, you know, some continuity with the coordinators and their head coach and stuff, but they've also been recruiting certain players and stuff. And, of course, you know, with the schedule, oh, by the way, here's Georgia and Florida. Screw you. Got screwed against Auburn. You know, and there was some questionable stuff against Missouri and LSU too. You know, I think that it's interesting he compared Arkansas with Michigan State, but, you know, you can say that with probably Iowa, Wisconsin. You know, there are some teams in the, in the Big Ten that have, you know, done a little bit better than maybe what they're supposed to. Minnesota a year ago. In the SEC, it's harder to find that. You know, it's maybe more brevity like Arkansas in the 2010-2011. Mississippi State, when they had Dak Prescott that year, still didn't, you know, finish it over the hump. They were ranked number one at one point. Ole Miss, when they were just cheating their butt off <laughs> under Hugh Freeze, you know. So, there's not as, like, you can't find so many examples like that in the SEC. And I think there's something to be said for that because you can find it in the Big Ten. You can find it in the Pac-12. In the SEC, it's like these guys and the rest of y'all. Arkansas has to be a team. It's about the sum of its part. Let's put let's put a little Arkansas in you. I love that statement from Josh. And Arkansas fans do have a screw you SEC mentality. And that didn't used to be the case. But I, I can think back, like, since I've been doing this job, which is 18 months now, or excuse me, 18 months, 18 years. Time flies when you're having fun. 18 years. I can't remember an instance, and even before that, you know, growing up in this state, going to the University of Arkansas, I don't remember games where Arkansas got a call at the end, and it's like, whew, Arkansas got lucky there, won that one. The refs were on Arkansas' side for that one. But I can remember so many games where Arkansas got screwed on a call or a no call and lost the game because of it. So many games in this conference. And that's why Arkansas fans are pissed off right now that's why you see them dogging Greg Sankey, dogging the SEC, gone rogue. And I don't blame them one bit because I see it. I see what's happened so many times. 
Anyway, I thought that was a great segment by Josh Pate. So I usually don't play an eight-minute clip on this show, but I felt the need to for this particular segment that he did last night. All right, what else we got here? We're going to go to Curtis Wilkerson here in a second. In fact, let's go ahead and hop over to Curtis because I do want to talk a little bit more about the basketball team. I want to talk a little bit more about baseball coming up. So we'll see what old Curtis has to say. For those of you who don't follow his show, his will come on after the basketball game. So on Wednesday, he'll talk about the Florida game a little bit. Hey, Trey. Hey, Curtis. We're just talking about you a little bit. Uh, I just played – I don't know if you had a chance to, to watch Josh Pate's video uh, on Arkansas, just kind of the, the mood, the pulse of the Arkansas fan base. I thought he did a great job. But transitioning back over to basketball and the top 25 Arkansas Razorbacks, what are your thoughts on what happened this past week, what's going on these past six SEC games, and what's on the horizon? Yeah, I mean, first of all, really, really cool deal for Arkansas to, to get some national recognition and, and find their way back into the polls. And, you know, you'll find a lot of people who say, ah, you know, those those rankings don't matter. They don't mean anything. Well, they, they do. I mean, mm-hmm. that, that automatically puts you on a – on a bigger stage in the national spotlight, it, it gets your highlights on sports center at night. And, you know, for the people on the selection committee who may have been, you know, taking a look at some other teams, they see Arkansas hop into the polls and they're going to start scrutinizing the resume a little bit heavier. And you want that and for a team that's trying to move up, uh, you know, out of that eight, nine seed line where they're at right now. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's just, it's really been impressive. I, I think, you know, Arkansas had their struggles there, Early in SEC play, you're you know without Justin Smith, right at a moment when you're just starting to be challenged for the first time. I mean, we've talked about the non-conference schedule and didn't really challenge you that much, and you hop in SEC play against Auburn, and you know your glue guy goes down. And you know, I I think we we might have had you know a, a little bit of a a bad taste in our mouth with how everything went down with Justin Smith being out. But now that he's back, I I think the team's starting to find themselves. They're starting to gel, get a little bit of an identity, and they're just flat out better with him on the floor, and, and it shows, you know. So, riling off these six straight SEC wins, even the loss to Oklahoma State that was sandwiched in there. I mean, Oklahoma State's a their national tournament team. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a, a team that's looking like a projected seven seed or so, and you know, Arkansas could have won that game too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you had a you had a shot to go ahead with five seconds left, and it rimmed out. So, uh, that was good, you know. In this past week. I really think Arkansas just made a statement. You know, we've talked about Kentucky and their struggles this year, but to go in and win in Rupp Arena, that's always a big deal, especially for an Arkansas team that hasn't beat them since 2014. Mm -hmm. And then to grind it out against Missouri the way they did and notch that signature win, because that was the thing. You know, Arkansas is going on the street, but everybody's saying, yeah, but they haven't beat anybody yet. They haven't beat anybody yet. Well, they went and did it, and yeah. that was big for the team. Uh, you know, they're in a good spot now, and it's all about how do you adjust from being the hunter to being the hunted because now the target's on their back in the top 25, and they got a big test coming up with a really good Florida team tomorrow night. It'll be interesting to see how they handle that. Curtis Wilkerson joining us. You can follow him at Kurt Wilkerson underscore on Twitter. He does a great job. And, Curtis, I wanted to ask you, I always love looking ahead, you know, and – Justin Smith, I thought it was interesting last week when we when we had our Zoom interview with him. You know, he was talking about how he doesn't still have that that same level of explosiveness. And I'm watching that first alley oop, and this dude's eyes are level with the rim, and he's got more. He's got more explosiveness. I wonder, you know, because everybody gets this year back. Could we possibly see Justin Smith back or Jalen Tate or, um, you know, some of these other guys like or Moses Moody? You know, I know it's not like a, a, a consideration of getting the year back, but, you know, Moses Moody's a, a lottery pick. I think a lot of people look at Moses and say, why is he a lottery pick? And and it's about upside more than anything because he doesn't have like he, – he doesn't seem to like just, I want the ball. Give me the ball at the end of the game and let me take over. And a lot of people want him to be that. But what, what are your thoughts about, I guess – Heck, all that, Curtis. I, I unloaded a <laughs> yeah. lot on you. <laughs> no, that's okay. Yeah, I, I, I'll start with Moses there. And I agree. You know, you take a look at some of these other guys that are projected lottery picks. I mean, you even think back to that Oklahoma State game with Kate Cunningham. I mean, that's that's a guy who, you know, wants the ball in his hands mm-hmm. and is going to take over and win a game for you down the stretch. And, uh, you know, that's not Moses' game. But 
you know, I, I think with him, it's all about his feel for the game at a young age. Mm-hmm. And you know, he, he kind of plays beyond his years and, and has a savvy about him. And then the measurables. I mean, he, he's six six. He has nearly a seven foot wingspan, and he's your classic three and D guy. You know, going into the league, so he'll he'll drain it from the outside. He's got plus potential as a perimeter defender, and uh, you know. He's he's starting to show some signs of being able to create some offense off the bounce and, and attack the rim. He's a good rebounder in his possession. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I definitely see him being a, a first-round potential lottery pick. It would be nice to get him back, but, you know, when, when the millions are calling, I, I, I think you probably got to go. But to to go back to your thoughts on those seniors, you know, I – I would, I would be surprised, and you know, I, I think Musselman even said that at the beginning of the year, that he didn't anticipate as many seniors returning for that extra year in basketball, maybe as, as we've seen in college football, mm-hmm. uh, because those guys want to you know, get on with their professional careers, and there's a lot of different avenues to make money, right. whether that's NBA or the G League or, or playing overseas. But I wouldn't 100% rule that out, especially with the guys you mentioned, in Justin Smith and Jalen Tate, I mean, there's there's something to be said for, you know, having a fully healthy season or, you know, coming back and establishing yourself in a program and up in your sock and, and kind of earning yourself a, a bigger paycheck down the road. You know, with, with Justin, he's so athletic, uh, but he is limited as a, as a professional prospect because he's not, not a great three-point shooter and, you know, needs to be able to handle the ball better, a little undersized if he's going to be a power forward, uh, you know, so – a guy like that, maybe he does want to come back. He's a really smart kid. I mean, he graduated from that prestigious business school in Indiana in three years. He's working on his master's degree. Maybe he can come back and finish it or even get another one. I I don't know. It, I'd, I'd be surprised if it happened, but I definitely wouldn't rule it out. So it's been a big week for Arkansas basketball. It's been a big week for Razorback football with uh, in, in terms of recruiting anyway. And looking ahead for baseball – They've got a chance to have a big week because they're going to face three Big 12 teams that are all ranked in the top 10 uh, coming up in Arlington at the uh, – uh, what, what is it called? The uh, State Farm College Baseball Classic at Globe Life Park, mm-hmm. home of the Texas Rangers. Um, what do you see with this baseball team and, and particularly uh, pitching? Yeah, I mean, the, the pitching there, that's going to be, I think, what decides the ceiling for this team, obviously – you take a look at the lineup with four guys on the, the all SEC preseason first team, they're going to hit. I mean, I, I think you know that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, with the pitching, uh, it sounds like Dave Van Horn is, is really happy with what he's seen so far in practice. And there's a lot of upside and a lot of potential and arm talent and depth. Uh, but, uh, you know, a lot of it's not proven. And, and I think that's the thing. It doesn't mean that they won't prove themselves. Uh but you just you're not sure what you're going to get until you roll them out there, and you know we mentioned the the competition that they're going to be playing over the weekend with these th- three highly ranked teams. I mean, if you have flaws, they're going to expose you real quick, and uh, you know we'll just see. I think it's really interesting with this pitching staff. You know, you have two guys in Connor Nolan and Patrick Wicklander who've been weekend starters for you for you know, parts of the last two seasons, there's a good chance neither one of them get a start this weekend because mm-hmm. other guys have, have kind of assumed those roles. Uh, and, you know, so maybe that means they're going to be pretty good, you know, and, and if they falter, what a luxury it is to be able to turn back to guys with that kind of experience and throw them in there. But it's going to be interesting. I know, you know, Van Horn mentioned Peyton Paulette, who's a, who's a returner that's been showing, you know, some really good things on the mound as potential weekend guy, Zeb Vermillion, who was, you know, was really a closer, kind of a flamethrower out of the pen. He's making the transition into a starter and he might have a weekend spot as well. So it'd be really interesting to see what you can get out of him. If you extend him over the course of, you know, several innings and a couple of times through the order. All right, Curtis. Well, I appreciate you joining us, man. Thanks for all the insight and stay warm. <laughs> Yeah, I'll do my best. I appreciate it. All right, Kurt. That's Curtis Wilkerson. Again, you can follow Curtis at Kurt Wilkerson underscore. Uh, puts out a great, uh, ton of great content on basketball. Is going to pick up on baseball as well. Uh, so be sure to follow Curtis and sign up at hogsports.com. We're going to get to your questions real quick, but I want to remind you before we do that, there's plenty of ways to watch and listen. You can always tune in on Facebook Live. 
If you haven't thrown us a thumbs up, like, or whatever you want to call it on Facebook Live, or excuse me, on Facebook or on YouTube also, go ahead and do that. Share the content with somebody you think might like it. Follow the page on Facebook and subscribe to the page on YouTube and hit the notifications bell so you're notified anytime we upload new videos. Also available on Apple Podcasts. If you haven't thrown us that five-star rating, we just passed 550 uh, reviews right now. So uh, if you haven't done that already, uh, please do that. That certainly helps boost our channel. Also available on Spotify, Stitcher, anywhere else you can think of to find your favorite podcast. Hog Sports is just $1 right now for your first month. So if you haven't signed up at Hog Sports, you can do so for $1. It's a great deal uh, to get you started on there, find out what you're missing. Also, sign up for our newsletter for uh, any time where there's breaking news, we'll send a newsletter out to your email inbox. But also every morning we'll send out a large majority of the content we send out will be free uh, Razorback news. So you can stay up to to date on the Hogs uh, just by checking your email each morning. Also, if you like breaking news text alerts, uh, we do those as well. So go to hogsports.com. At the top right, you'll see like the three bars or the three dots, depending if you're desktop or mobile, and you'll see the option to sign up for the newsletter or breaking news text alerts. Sometimes there won't be anything for a while on text alerts. Uh, sometimes there'll be a lot of stuff. We sent out one this morning when Arkansas was ranked 24th in the AP poll. So uh, be sure to sign up for all of those things if you have not done so already. All right, let's pop over to a couple of questions. Adrian Jones says, Trey, you look cold. Yeah, I mean, it is cold. <laughs> it was minus one degree when I woke up this morning. I got a little bit of a late start because uh, the daughter didn't have to go to school. Uh, so kind of kind of slept a little bit there, and I knew what the, what outside was going to be like. Lisa Cup Hansock, Hancock says, how much snow and light? Hmm. Bear, oh, that's Bob Carroll Hager says that. I'm not sure what you mean. Raise it back. Everything is good now and getting better. Pat Gamble says, go raise it back. Chase Hogan Jones says, snowed in and Conway. Brandon Huggaby says, we pick Suey. Also, Trey. Trey, man, what a move y'all made when you hired Curtis Wilkerson. Man, he's my best friend since we were 12, and he loves – and he works his tail off to do what he loves. He, he's just doing a great job. We couldn't be happier with uh, the addition of Curtis Wilkerson. I've always said, you know, it's always been me and Danny. Um, you know, and we've had some other guys who have done a good job for us. Um uh, um, but I really think moving forward, when people talk about hog sports, they're not going to say Trey, Danny. They're going to say Trey, Danny, Curtis. That's my hope anyway, and, and he's done a great job. Bryce Stubbs says, trust, po- trust, pro- trust the process. Let's see. Adrian Jones says, they lose to Florida. They'll be out of the rankings. Must keep winning. Yep, it's a big game. It's in Fayetteville, though. Isaac Riley says, basketball has been nice to watch with Coach Musk's personality. Can't wait for baseball and it's cold weather to leave. I mean, it's like till Thursday, I think, before we get temperatures above freezing. Matt Bounce says, excited to watch Hogs Gators tomorrow. Bud Walton usually go to the game in Gainesville. First time, been favored in a minute. Woo pig, everything. Kelvin Corbin says, referee tried to give the game to Missouri. He tried. Arkansas kept their heads. I mean, again, I don't understand. I mean, I understand, but, like, Arkansas makes the play there. Without the bad whistle, it's Arkansas ball, okay? And it worked out in the end for Arkansas, but, like, the rule is I understand, like, there's a clear and immediate recovery. I mean, like, Arkansas, like, how can you not look at that and be like, you know, it could go 50-50 here. Do we go with the possession error or do we go with the immediate recovery of the rebound? Now, let's go with the possession error. Give it back to Missouri. Screw it. I mean, that's really what it felt like because it's 50-50. They could, they could have given that to Arkansas, and Arkansas deserved it. They were there for the rebound. They made the play, and you give it to Missouri. It's bull. It's crap is what it is. It's crap. You know it. I know it. They know it. The SEC knows it. It's crap. Bryce Stubbs says, Trey, the refs always treat us bad, but we always hog it out. Not always. <laughs> Certainly not always. Steve Benton says, Trey, you know, we usually don't handle prosperity well. A Florida win will go a long way with me. I agree with that so adamantly. I mean, like, Arkansas is not a champion, but they always say, you know, it's one thing to win the championship. It's another thing to hold on to it. Philip Mooton says, I believe we can beat Florida. I think so, too. Really impressed with the way the defense has stepped up. Yep. Just, I mean, now's not the time to lay an egg. <laughs> Philip Mooton says, yeah, I hate when they just keep putting Moody in the league. They do. I mean, every time you see him on TV, it's like, this guy's gone. This guy's going in the lottery and stuff. And, again, 
he has that potential. As Curtis was saying, the seven foot wingspan, uh, you know, the range that he has, being six six, you know, his feel for the game. The thing that he's just he lacks is just that killer instinct at the end of the game. I want the ball. I'm going to win this. I'm going to go take this. If he had just a little bit of JD Note there at the end, then I think more Arkansas fans would see it. But that doesn't mean that he, you know, that he can't build that. He's just a freshman. Moody is a calming effect for Arkansas one more year, and he would be an All American. I mean, if he's going to be a lottery pick, then I think he's probably gone. Philip Mooton says Moody needs to stay one more year. Him and Nick Smith Jr. and some more vets. I mean, like. He needs to stay one more year in the sense of he could help Arkansas and he could become a better player, but he can still do that in the NBA and still be drafted and be a millionaire. Kelvin Corbin says the running back coach was once his con his coach in high school, if I'm correct, says Kelvin. You know, Jimmy Smith is another you know, he's a guy that a lot of people are like, What? But he's done a great job recruiting. Look at Arkansas's running back recruiting. I mean, this kid's gonna be a four star, I think, composite. Um, you know, getting AJ Green, JB on Hunt. I mean, that's some some nice pickups at running back. And it's been a while since Arkansas has gotten four-star running backs. Suddenly, they are. Donnell Poole says, hard work, payoffs, let's go Hogs. Bryce Subb says, stud, 100%. Philip Mooton says, we need to make sure Appleby, Florida guard that went to Jacksonville, doesn't get on. Hey, by the way, speaking of Florida, Gus Malzahn, I guess it's official. I, I, I mean, our, they're, UCF suspected to announce Gus Malzahn as their head coach. I think, I think UCF's getting a better deal between Tennessee – I th- First of all, I think he would have gone to Tennessee. According to my source, he would have gone to Tennessee if Tennessee had offered him the job. But so Tennessee gets the UCF uh, athletic director, and then after a nationwide search, they also get the UCF head coach in Josh Heupel and pay you know what six million dollars or whatever to UCF to get him. So they have to pay the buyout and all this stuff. When Gus Malzahn's right there, buyout free. I think Gus Malzahn would have been a better hire than Heupel. I mean, just because he wore out his welcome at Auburn doesn't mean he's not a good coach. I think UCF's getting the better deal. They're Not only are they getting the money, but they're getting Gus Malzahn. That's my thoughts on it. So, anyway, I, didn't know, I, knew, I think we all knew that, that Gus Malzahn wouldn't take him long. I think he'll do well there. Tyler Tober says, I understand a lot has happened, but it's insane to think we went from last four and first four out in bracketology to top 25 in two weeks. I mean, a lot can change in a short amount of time. Here's another thing. I mean, if they'd have gotten to play that Texas A&M game, and I know the butterfly effect, everything changes after that. You can't – but if they'd have played that Texas A&M game and Arkansas was banged up for it, but it was in Bud Walton Arena and Texas A&M's not very good, then they'd be sitting alone in, in second place right now. And they'd have seven SEC wins in a row. Casey Humphrey says, do we know what position they like the new player from Georgia playing? I believe running back. I think he's going to be a running back. But we got, I mean, he could do a lot of different things for you. We've seen him line up at Wildcat. We've seen him line up at wide receiver. And in this day and age, that's a good thing to have. Wilson Wood says, rip to the must haters. Will Lennox says, football recruits that you think we will get this year? Uh, That's probably a better question for Danny. Now, Danny's got a nice breakdown uh, this morning. Uh, You know, he does these different segments of what we call the big red board where we list the prospects that Arkansas is targeting. We list them whether it's hot, warm, or cold, an indicator, arrow of it, whether it's up, down, or staying the same. You know, kind of break down the other players that are on the roster and stuff. And Danny's done that for 2022 quarterback recruiting. It's a good article. You need a VIP subscription. So if you haven't signed up for Hog Sports, H-A-W-G sports.com. See where Danny thinks Arkansas stands right now with 2022 recruits. It's $1. Sign up for $1 right now. Kevin Corbin says top 25 is nice, but if that doesn't mean top five seed in the tournament, it's meaningless. I mean, I, I get that sense of it, but, you know, like Curtis was saying, I agree with what Curtis says in that, you know, if you're in the top 25, it shows up. It's in the newspaper. It's in a national paper. It's on, you know, ESPN. You know, they're more likely to look at your game. You know, that Alabama game, you know, if Arkansas survives through, you know, this week um, and remains in the top 25, that's a matchup between two top 25 teams, a little more attention for that, you know. So there's all kinds of benefits to being top 25 where there's – you know, like top 25 recruiting may mean nothing if you don't, you know, turn that into winning 10 games or something. 
but it shows up. You know, everybody sees the top 25 recruiting rankings, the breakdowns that go along with that, all the little side articles that people put together, top 25 this or that. So it does matter. But you're right in the sense of if it doesn't mean the top five seed, you know, maybe on court, you're right. David Stauffer says, it's not meaningless at all. It puts us in the national spotlight, like we're saying. Let's see what else we got. Can we finish with eight wins, says Andrew Sawyer. Lisa Cup Hancock says, Big 12 is way worse than SEC Texas. If they ever go independent, we'll make the Big 12 collapse. No thanks. Oh, yeah, I don't want to go to the Big 12. Like, I know a lot of people talk – like, it's kind of like, yeah, you hate on the SEC, but where are you going to go? You kind of – you kind of stuck with them. You know, the money's too good. The attention's too good. All Everything's too good in the SEC. The towns are better. I, from a media standpoint, I would rather go to Knoxville or, um, you know, Columbia, South Carolina even, or Athens, Georgia, or Baton Rouge, Tuscaloosa, you know, I would, Oxford, or – do you want to go to like Lubbock? I mean, Austin's about the only place that I would be like, yeah, I'm looking forward to going to Austin. I don't know if I want to go to Waco. You know, Fort Worth, I guess. I go to Fort Worth. But the cities are better. The towns are better. The college towns are better. My opinion, anyway. I haven't been to the Little Apple. I don't know. There are places I haven't been to in the Big 12. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm, I'm an ill-informed. I've been everywhere in the SEC. I've been all every campus in the SEC, every stadium. Chris Carter says, is Arkansas going to reschedule the game they missed with Texas A&M? I think it's a long shot. I think it's a long shot. Texas a and has missed so many games. Andrew Sawyer says, we beat Flor- if we beat Florida, and Alabama, Florida, Alabama, and LSU, do we go – do we get like a four or five seed? I mean, if they beat Florida, Alabama, and LSU and take care of the other games, then, yeah, they'll be a four seed, I would think. I don't know if that's going to happen, though. It's a lot to ask. Only SEC announcers mentioned Moody. National guys never bring him up. It's all Cunningham and Cooper. Tyler Tober says it would be nice to keep some of these guys, but that might make some of the freshmen decide to leave. Yeah, Trey, truly, yeah, true Trey because of the upside effect, referring to Moody. Did they see – Patrick Sins said, did they see the change of possession arrow, though? They didn't change it on TV on the scoreboard on TV. Philip Mooton says, hey, Trey, what do you think about the linebacker recruits for 2022? Again, I'm going to point you to Danny West on all the recruiting stuff. But they did make a change of linebacker coach for a reason. Don Terrell Sr. says, I got sick of the announcers talking about Tillman who wasn't playing. You know, guys, it's so easy nowadays to – put Chuck and uh, Matt Zimmerman, you know. And I know some people like Matt and some people don't. I like Matt. I think he does a good job. I, I like his, you want to call it homerism or whatever. The thing that I like about watching or listening to radio and watching the TV, the telecast, is first of all, like Chuck, especially for away teams, like Chuck's going to say everybody's name, you know, passes the ball to Pinson, you know. He's going to say every player that receives the ball. And so I think that helps with like, just following a little bit better who's in the game, you know, and, you know, what players from Missouri or, you know, whoever else are doing well. Uh, you don't get the same regurgitated content that you get from – because it's a new set of announcers. You know, they don't know what's been said before. Uh, they're also – a lot of times uh, you can tell that they're not at the game. You know, it was like – with the different foul calls, like somebody had, you know, fouled out of the game, they'd have the foul, the numbers wrong. Or Moses Moody, you know, it took him forever to say anything when he got a second foul early in the Missouri game. And they're like, it just gets glossed over, you know. But with Chuck and Matt, they, they go above and beyond on the details of things. The only thing that I don't like about the radio, and, and it's because of this year as it's been explained to me, um, you know, they don't have a control over, like, the ambient noise in the arena. You know, it's just – it's just Zimmerman and Barrett and their voice. You don't get the ball bouncing. You don't get the sneaker squeaking. You know, you don't get the crowd, whatever crowd is in there. You don't get that aspect of it, the the nets popping. You know, so you lose that. And a lot of that's due to the pandemic that we're in right now. And you're at the mercy of other programs, you know, when you go on the road and stuff. Uh, but but the content, the, the audio, uh, the, you know, w- what they had to say is so much better. And it's not hard to do. I have a Sonos, so I sync my TV up. With, uh, you know, on my phone, I get on uh, TuneIn Radio, Arkansas Razorbacks, you know, network, their IMG deal. 
I get on there and I just sync it up, pause the TV a little bit, and it catches up, and I listen to the radio. Now, again, I miss the ambient noise that kind of puts you into the game a little bit more, but I love the descriptive side of things from those guys. So, all right, everybody, we're going to wrap it up here. Uh, again, Josh Pate, fantastic job. If you're looking for a more national college football uh, show, The Late Kick with Josh Pate. Uh, a fantastic job. 24-7 sports on YouTube. I want to thank Curtis Wilkerson also for the insight that he brings with Razorback basketball and, of course, uh, with baseball. And his coverage of baseball is going to pick up, obviously, uh, with that starting to get into full swing, as they say. And uh, thank you to all of you guys for for tuning into the show, making it popular. I appreciate the ratings on Apple Podcasts. Leave a review if you like the content. Let other people know what they can expect. And sign up for $1 if you haven't done so already. All right, everybody. Thanks again. Stay warm out there. It's cold. This has been Trey Biddy with hogsports.com. Curtis will be back with you guys for Hog Hoops Live on Wednesday following the Arkansas game uh, tomorrow against the Florida Gators. This has been Trey Biddy with hogsports.com, and we'll catch you next time. 